At the center of our Central American wonderland is the Panama Canal, and all around it, the rainforests are exploding with life. Central America is one of the best places in the world to study biodiversity. The Panama Canal is a land bridge between the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea that attracts plants and animals from both North and South America, as well as from the Caribbean islands. Did you know that 7% of the whole world's animal population lives in this one location? You can see why. In these humid, tropical forests where the temperature always teeters around 80 degrees, you can expect an average of 98 inches of rainfall each year. This atmosphere is perfect for the vast array of animals who feed off the plants and sometimes off each other. But in this spectacular kingdom of wildlife, there's no question who runs the show. Can you guess what rainforest animal makes this earth-shaking roar? Just another warm and quiet morning in the rainforest. And all the animals are asleep. All, that is, except for one. Sounds like King Kong's about to come crashing through the leaves. But wait. Does all that noise really come from a little 30-pound monkey? It's the famous mantled howler. These roosters of the rainforest unleash long, drawn-out calls early each morning to wake everyone up and get the day started. How can such a large noise come from such a small creature? The howler's larynx is unusually large. The howl is produced as the monkey draws air into an enlarged hyoid bone in the throat. With each howl, the throat inflates into vibrating balloons, making sounds that carry for almost a mile across the dense jungle. Mostly males make this noise as a way of marking their territory from other groups of primates. Howlers are also known as the cows of the treetops. And these herbivores love stuffing handfuls of fresh green leaves down their throats, munching away like cattle. A typical group of howlers includes about 20 monkeys. When a baby howler is very young, other groups of monkeys may try to kidnap it. In order to protect her baby, a mother howler will carry around her infant for about six months. The howlers are the largest of the New World monkeys and the loudest neotropical animal around. But howlers are not the only monkeys in the rainforest. To find a spider monkey, just follow the sound of rattling branches and screeches and look up to witness some of the most acrobatic creatures on Earth. Quick, lean, and limber, spider monkeys can swing from branch to branch faster and further than a human can run on ground. These guys are definitely not all thumbs. In fact, they don't even have thumbs, making their hand-over-hand -hand swinging technique easier. Leaping up to 30 feet from tree to tree, these spideys are no comic marvels either. They're the real thing. Spider monkeys have very strong tails, which they use as a fifth limb. This long tail comes in handy when they need to grab fruit off trees and joggle around. You think you have a good social life? These guys live in large groups and love to spend the afternoons just, well, hanging out. Unimpressed by all that monkey business? Well, you've got company. The attractive white-faced capuchins have a more arrogant demeanor. Confident in their black body and moon-like white cowl, the capuchins wouldn't trade in their fur coats for any mink. Very intelligent and alert, these omnivorous capuchins keep a more focused eye on their surroundings, in case some tasty invertebrates like small lizards scurry by. They spend 80% or more of their daylight hours searching for food. 
These crafty capuchins are meticulous with their snacks, picking out only the tastiest insects and the ripest fruits. They're also greedy thieves, stealing crops for a rainy day, which is pretty much every day in the rainforest. They have large teeth to use on food or small prey. If you ever see a capuchin, I suggest you don't get too close. They may look cute and cuddly, but capuchins are far from friendly little critters to anyone outside their clique. Within their own group, capuchins are fun and playful, and families share a special bond, especially mother and baby. Very vocal animals, the capuchins scream, whistle, bark, and scurry all across the treetops, and even around the forest floors. There's no question in their minds who's ringleader around here. As crowded as these jungles are with capuchin, howler, and spider monkey clans, this whole big family of New World monkeys somehow managed to hang out in harmony. All living things need energy so they can move and grow. Where does this energy come from? It comes from the food that these organisms eat. There's a careful balance to the food chain. Monkeys in the treetops eat leaves, which drop to the forest floor, where leafcutter ants scoop them up to take back to their nest and ferment into food. But along the way, these ants make tasty snacks for the ant eaters foraging around. That's a food chain. Of course, no animal wants to be eaten. So to keep the chase a challenge, every form of wildlife has a unique way of protecting itself. One of the most clever being camouflage. And the rainforest is a great place for hide and seek. You'd never know it at first glance, but close to 10% of the world's entire population of butterflies live in this region. Butterflies are not always easy to spot because these masters of disguise use camouflage to hide from their enemies. Other insects in the forest use similar techniques to blend in with the bark and leaves around them. These butterflies share meals with any number of the 35,000 insect species here. That's a whole lot of bugs. Look closely at this tree. See anything unusual? How about now? That's right, it's a bat. Sack-winged bats blend into the bark of trees and remain so still, they're barely visible. Bats use camouflage to hide from predators so they can enjoy their afternoon siestas. The tent bat actually nibbles on the veins of plant leaves until they collapse into a little tent above the winged creature. The tropics are actually home to many bat species, 10 of which are carnivorous, including the infamous vampire bats. With razor-sharp incisor teeth, vampires need at least two tablespoons of blood a day from their bird or mammal prey. Bats are actually mammals themselves because they have hair, a regulated body temperature, and because they nurse their young. Did you know that bats are the only mammals that truly fly rather than glide? These jet fighters can fly up to 10,000 feet high and up to 80 miles an hour. Unlike birds, whose wings are braced to their rib cage, a bat's wings muscles are attached to their shoulder blades, leaving the chest flat and light. Two layers of thin skin containing blood vessels, nerves, and tendons make up the wing membrane, which extends from the sides of the bat's body and incorporates its little hands, legs, and tail. Bats are definitely not the only ones flying around. More than 800 different kinds of bird species are found in the rainforest. The most striking, of course, are the scarlet macaws and the long-beaked toucan. These popular tropical birds may be pretty, but they're pretty mean, too. In addition to eating fruits, these birds will eat insects, lizards, and even other birds straight out of their nest. Macaws often bicker with one another, never keeping domestic disputes indoors. But in the end, they always seem to kiss and make up.
Whatever you do, don't take kisses from the snakes in the rainforest. Of the 200 reptile species here, more than half are snakes. Though they're very hard to spot because they spend most of the day sleeping and come out at night to hunt. If you do come across one, big trouble. Many of these snakes are highly venomous. One of these highly venomous snakes is the pit viper, including this fair de lance. Pit vipers got their name because they all have two indentations, or pits, behind and above the nostrils. These pits can detect changes in temperature as small as one thousandth of a degree Celsius. That smallest change in temperature lets the viper know a warm-blooded mammal is near. But snakes are not predator to all. In fact, they are victim to birds, monkeys, and kawadi. These bad boys are relatives to the raccoons. With long, bushy, ringed tails and masked faces, they look and even act more like bandits. Kawadi should not be confused with the famous anteaters, who rummage about the forest floor as well as up in the trees. Food abounds for them in this rainforest, and parades of leafcutter ants are a favorite feast. Leafcutter ants pave six-inch trails for miles across the forest floor, carrying leaves that weigh up to 12 times their own body weight. These leaves are collected and rotted into mulch, which grows a fungus that the ant colony feeds on. And the trail goes on. Watching it all from above is the sloth. Unless they move, you're lucky if you can catch a glimpse. If they seem to be moving in slow motion, they are. Sloths are the slowest animals in the world. So slow, in fact, that algae grows on their fur. Their shaggy fur coat keeps them warm, but could use a good dry cleaning, since it's littered with thousands of beetles and other insects. No wonder they never stop itching. Talk about a rush of blood to the head. Sloths spend almost their entire lives upside down. They eat and even sleep in this position. About two feet in length, they are incredibly limber, spreading their hairy arms and legs and grasping for branches with their long claws. Though their commute won't be more than 150 feet a day. Not bad mileage. You'd never know it by their figure but sloths are quite light eaters because of their slow metabolism. All their energy goes to their gut and digestive system. Sloths eat everything from bird eggs and insects to leaves and lizards. A sloth has only one baby at a time, and she becomes like a nest where the baby can nap and breastfeed all in the comfort of mama's belly. Curious by nature, sloths will explore at a young age. But the only reason a sloth actually comes down from the trees is to go to the bathroom. Imagine having to climb up and down a tree every time you want to go to the bathroom. Whew, exhausting. Between the rainforest and the water is a broad belt of fine sandy beach. It's along this stretch that on any given day, you'll witness an array of sunbathing beauties. The green iguana is typically five feet long and up to 10 pounds heavy. Unlike mammals that can regulate their body temperature, cold-blooded creatures like the iguana cannot live without a warm, humid environment. No wonder they love to spend hours each day soaking in the rays along the shore. It's not just to get a great tan. Iguanas are also excellent climbers and will travel into the trees to feed off leaves, fruits, and flowers. Like most lizards, iguanas use camouflage as their main source of defense, but they are also surprisingly quick sprinters and will dive straight into the nearest body of water if they feel threatened. The ocean water surrounding these Central American islands bring in a whole world of fascinating and even fierce marine life from both the Caribbean and the Pacific side. A popular appetizer for the marine birds on the island is the Sally Lightfoot crab. 
this brightly colored crustacean lives along the rocky shore where it scurries around on five pairs of legs. The front two legs have small blocky claws that can be used for feeding on fresh algae or for fisting it out in a duel over food. Most crabs move sideways or even backwards, helping them avoid predators and move quickly into hiding places. Crabs have two round beady eyes on the tips of little stalks, and right between them are little feelers. On the outside, crabs are protected by a hard shell or exoskeleton, but on the inside, their flesh is soft and tasty. Careful, looks like it might be time for a birdie snack. These crabs are definitely not too easy to catch, but this red-billed tropic bird is determined. Frigates aren't the only colorful creatures around. Take a look at these gorgeous flamingos. Like the blue-footed boobies and frigates, the flamingos use their color to attract their partner. A healthy mate will have very vibrant feathers thanks to a good food supply. These graceful rose-colored birds can be found in the island's saltwater lagoons, which is also where they lay their eggs. Thanks to their long, thin legs, flamingos can easily wade deep into the water to feed. They use webbed feet to walk across the soft mud or to propel themselves through the water while swimming. Flamingos are filter feeders. They have developed special beaks to filter out the mud from the good stuff. These birds feed mainly off of brine shrimp that they scoop up from the muddy lagoon floor. And that's not all they use their beaks for. This flamingo is very thoroughly primping its plumage to stay fluffy and bright, probably getting ready for a date. Known for their great balance, flamingos frequently stand on one leg. Measuring around four and a half feet tall, but weighing only about five and a half pounds, these large birds are also good at flying. Flamingos can reach a speed up to 40 miles an hour and have been known to travel more than 350 miles in one flight. The majestic sea turtle has been in existence for more than 150 million years. These leatherbacks can be as heavy as 1,500 pounds with a shell up to five feet long. Also living in the underwater sea garden of the Caribbean are schools of fish weaving in and out of the stunning coral reefs that stretch as far as 650 feet offshore. In the clear blue of the Caribbean, coastal dolphins are adapted for warm, shallow waters. With smaller bodies, they stay cool, and their larger flippers make it easier to maneuver around. A dolphin's forelimbs, or pectoral flippers, are used to steer and with the help of the flukes, to stop. Each lobe of the dolphin's tail is called a fluke. Basically, flukes are flat pads of tough, dense, fibrous connective tissue. Strong muscles along the dolphin's back and tail move the flukes up and down to propel the dolphin through the water. Generally, dolphins swim at speeds of about three to seven miles per hour. But with a burst of energy, they can jet as fast as 20. They have a sleek, streamlined body and can grow to be as long as 12 feet and over 1,000 pounds. Dolphins can dive as deep as 1,800 feet for as long as 10 minutes. That's a long time to hold your breath. Eventually, dolphins have to come up for air. And when they do, they love to show off. Dolphins are also good at hiding, and they don't have to be in the rainforest to camouflage. They have a grayish green toned back and a soft white underbelly. This coloration helps conceal them from both predators and prey. Friendly by nature, dolphins share these waters with a distant cousin, the breathtaking orca whales. 
Orcas are the largest member of the oceanic dolphin family. The average length of an orca is 30 feet, weighing in around six tons. You think that's big? Check out the sperm whales around here. The largest of the toothed whales, sperm whales grow to be about 60 feet long and 50 tons. Now that's a big boy. That about wraps up this week's adventure in Central America. From swimming with whales and dolphins to swinging through the rainforest canopy with wild monkeys, this adventure is definitely wilder than any zoo on Earth. Take wonder in wildlife the way it was meant to live. 